<laughs> oh, come on. It's 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 five o'clock somewhere, as they say. Uh, welcome, everybody. Uh, welcome to Social Selling Wednesday, where we talk about social selling, LinkedIn, Twitter, sales, and anything else we can think of when it comes to social selling and social business. <laughs> My name is Bob Woods. I am a social business strategist with People Links and a coach and trainer at Social Sales GPS. Hey, I'm Michael and I'm a chief storyteller at StayingAliveUK.com and I'm also a social seller and I'm in the UK and it's 4 p.m. <laughs> <laughs> Where are your children? <laughs> yeah, exactly. <laughs> and I'm Ted Padromo. I'm author of Ultimate Guide to LinkedIn for Business and Ultimate Guide to Twitter for Business and I'm a social seller also and I do online marketing for a lot of companies. Excellent, excellent. Jez, Jez Johnson is on, and uh, he, he must be in the UK too because he says Yay. he can vote. So, so we're not out. So, uh, so right now it's UK two and US two. So uh, let's see if we can get those numbers up on both sides or from from wherever you are at in the globe. So we are here every Wednesday at 11 a.m. Eastern, uh, 8 a.m. Pacific, 4 p.m. British summertime, or however that translates to uh, where you are at. So um, the way that thing, things work out here is we first start off the show with any changes that we have either noticed on LinkedIn or today it's gonna be a change that's kind of uh, rolling out at, at least what uh, Michael and I are, are going to be talking about. Not sure what Ted's gonna be talking about. And then we go on to uh, our just one thing part, which is a, a tip or trick that uh, each of us has just based on our previous uh, coaching, training, writing, and all that good type of stuff. So um, Ted, why don't you go ahead and go first? Uh, have you noticed anything different on LinkedIn or or, or anything that, that you want to highlight? Ted has. Ted yeah, has. Ted does. Yeah. yeah. Look at that smile. Okay. The inbox is definitely in transition. <laughs> yes. <laughs> oh, God, yes. That's Every day it looks a little different. <laughs> I haven't seen the birthdays reappear in there yet, but I did notice on the mobile app yesterday the birthdays are there. Yeah. Oh, no wait. Yes. No, yeah. Don't mind yeah, that. They are there. I noticed Just that. Just like the old, like the desktop version with all the cards. Yep. Yeah. 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 Who? Well, God. they they have the cards anyway, right? With any job <laughs> changes and anniversaries. But yes, the birthdays so, disappeared for a while. <laughs> yeah. 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 Birthdays weren't there, and no, now we're never back. there. And. Um, <laughs> Is, yeah, I mean, basically it's back to uh, status quo in terms of mobile, but um, but on the desktop. And and again, I I haven't seen any of the uh, changes yet, but um, but birthdays are now evidently appearing in the inbox and not where you used to see them before. Well, I don't see those yet. Like Bryn mentioned that. Yeah, Bryn week, said that. Yeah, because I see the invitations when people accept my invitations. Now it's in the inbox. Very not bright. all of them. Not all of them. Don't do that to me. <laughs> <laughs> okay, here, here's what I've discovered, and I have tested this. Mm -hmm. Only when you send an invitation and you would per personalize it, right? Yeah. So you will see that this person is now a connection. If they personalize the invitation, you will see they are now a connection. If they send the standard invitation, it doesn't happen. Interesting. Ah, it doesn't interesting. happen. So more reason to customize every invitation. That's yeah. right. Yeah. Exactly. For yeah. now, that's what I've noticed. For now, until until tomorrow comes and everything gets blown up. But well, for now, five minutes time, it will be different. Yeah. Yeah. I, <laughs> well, and at least there's consistency. Yeah, they are. They are consistent in their inconsistency, I, I guess, is probably the uh, the the best way to put it. And and, and just for those of you out there who, who don't know this, when when LinkedIn does changes, they don't do anything in one fell swoop. It, it all kind of kind of rolls out 
to certain people and then more people and then more people. And then as, as we're discovering more and more, sometimes um, not all of the, all of the changes even roll out as complete changes as, as we're talking about with the uh, birthday thing here, for example, because that's one thing that all of us teach here is using birthdays as, as a way to either um, as a way to reconnect with people and, uh, and, and start new conversations with them. So that's why we harp on birthdays so much. It, it may seem kind, kind of minor, but we've all seen cases where just based on a birthday, we've we've had new conversations start um, based on the fact that someone's ha having a birthday, basically. And that's uh, and, and conversations are what uh, social selling is ultimately all about. And 40 percent of the people I send happy birthday to and ask them what they did respond yep. and they tell me what they did on their birthday. Yeah. A 40 a huge. Yeah. 40% response rate on anything that you do in a marketing type thing is just a tremendous number. So, so, um, so colossal, colossal. Yeah, it is. Absolutely. So, um, so, so that's why we harp so, so hard on birthdays besides the fact that they're cool. Everybody likes their, everybody they should love their birthdays. Everybody, everybody should if they don't. Well, sometimes you don't, it depends on if that, you know, if, if a big ugly number is coming up for, for, for someone, but in general, people, you know, pe people do like their birthdays. So, and, and, and that's a good thing to share and talk about and, uh, and renew a connection on basically. So that's good to hear, uh, or that's, you know, that's interesting, interesting to hear. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so anyhow, um, and then Michael and I, um, I don't know if you've actually seen this live yet. I haven't seen it live yet. I'm yes. only going based on press coverage. So, um, oh, let me share a link. Let me share a link. Yeah, people can right can watch it. Uh, it's pretty cool. Uh, it seems like it's pretty cool. So, just let everyone know what's what's going on. LinkedIn has has moved more strongly in the video and um, and the. Um, and the headline from TechCrunch that I have says LinkedIn moves into video starring, starting with Quora style Q and A from influencers. So this is basically, and and Michael can can speak to this more since he's actually seen this. But this is basically that stable of LinkedIn influencers, you know that uh, that for whatever reason LinkedIn has acknowledged these people as being influencers in whatever industry or whatever it is they're doing. They're actually now answering questions via video. And this video, if you're subscribed to that influencer, is appearing in everyone's news feed. So with that, Michael, why don't you go ahead and 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 let us know just some more of the specifics? Because like I said, I haven't seen it yet in action. Yeah, I haven't seen it appear in my news feed yet. Mm -hmm. However, I did see the TechCrunch, and in the TechCrunch, they actually shared Reed Hoffman's video. Right, yeah. Which was in response to a question which he asked, which is, what is the first thing in your office, AI, artificial intelligence, in case you didn't know, will take over, question mark? And there are one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine yeah nine responses okay. and and it auto plays ah. so yeah it's it auto plays so as you scroll down each there's like a as big as our blab video window it's about that size okay and you can then the video is 30 seconds long maximum. Mm -hmm. So there's some 15, some 20 seconds. Mm -hmm. You can then engage with it. You can like it, comment, share it, uh, follow the individual if you're not following them already. Mm -hmm. So they'll get some more engagement out of it, which is pretty cool. Mm -hmm. Yep. But the interesting thing is, if you remember way back when, when they first introduced influencers with their own blog posts inside LinkedIn, eventually, mm -hmm. All of us got the facility to write uh, pulse posts, or right. they called them long form posts. The name has changed so many times. Yeah, blog posts. So here's hoping that uh, in the future we will get the same facility. Yeah. But I had an idea. Sorry, Bob. No, please. I want to share with you this amazing idea I've got, and that is we could do the same 
using Facebook Live, mm -hmm. right? Yeah. So we could pose a question and then we could all, in everybody we know even, could go and record a 30 second response on Facebook Live to that question. How cool would that be? Mm -hmm. So we could hop on Facebook and start practicing already. Yeah. yeah. Just an idea. Yeah. <laughs> so yeah. if you're up for that, we should do some of that next week. Yeah, 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 yeah. It's a real good possibility. We should talk more about that. Um, Jez Johnson, uh, of, uh, your fellow uh, UK person, uh, says he expects they will roll this service out as a paid service for brands, which... Um, and, and I actually responded back. I wouldn't be surprised at some point if they rolled out like a tiered t type of thing and, and you know, they, it, it would be free at first, but then, you know, eventually you got to pay the piper because that's what, you know, everybody's out there to make money and there's nothing wrong with that. And, um, you know, for, for people, uh, for people like us and, and, and others who depend on LinkedIn to, to, to build our businesses and things like that, you know, it, it may be, you know, do you see it possibly as part of 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 one of the um, premium services? You know, uh, uh, maybe the uh, the uh, free members don't get that, but you know, they may start including that in paid service and maybe bump up the the price a little bit for paid service. What what did, what do you think about that? Personally, I think they're going to trial it with influencers and see how that rolls. Yeah, after that, yeah. Uh, I mean, it's about time they did something video centric. So I'm pleased they're doing that. Mm -hmm. Yes, yeah, a good thing. But I would hope they wouldn't made it make it a paid service because just imagine, it's a bit like Facebook Live, right? It's the equivalent of Facebook Live, but there's more mm -hmm. of a purpose to it, right? Rather than people just recording anything. Mm -hmm. And uh, so it's a little bit in competition with that. Plus imagine the increase you will have in number of eyeballs going to LinkedIn Yeah, when you have something like that as a service that everybody could get hold of. Mm -hmm. Now, inevitably, it's a massive streaming capacity that they need. Right. But as long as they keep the video short with a mm -hmm. maximum length, that should be okay too. So I would imagine there must be, you know, when you're recording the video, I guess, it's it's already built in inside LinkedIn, so you click the record button inside LinkedIn. It's not an external facility, mm -hmm. and then <clears throat> there must be a timer or something because none of these are longer than thirty seconds. Yeah, and one of them, in fact, is bang on thirty seconds. So they must see a timer going, and it then stops because otherwise you just wouldn't know that you were speaking for thirty seconds if you were looking, you know, at the camera. Yeah, actually. Um, Actually, according to the TechCrunch article, and, and I'm going to just read directly from it, influencers yeah. will be creating their videos using a special app called Record that LinkedIn has created for this purpose, which for now there will only be accessible by these influers, uh, influencers, basically. Okay. So, so, so it may yeah. actually be, um, you know, it may not be on the desktop, although at some point they may roll that out, but, but it appears that they're using mobile apps to, to, to actually capture the video. That's fine. Don't yeah. care where it oh, is. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Without a doubt. I mean, it's probably better to be mobile because that's where most people spend their time, right? Right. So, yeah. 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 So it gives them some instructions and there must be a timer on it. And then they know how to record 30 seconds of, of some, you know, response to the question that has been posed. Right. Have you seen Mario's post? He's been doing some video posts recently. I've, he's been doing it for a while. These these kind of, you know, rough, oh, yeah, yeah. Rough raw and unfiltered. Rough, he calls it. Yeah, he calls them what? Raw and unfiltered. That's it. Raw and unfiltered. Yeah, yeah. That's Mario. Yeah, yeah exactly. Yep. Cool. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. yeah he's, he, that that's the kind of thing almost. So he's answering a few questions here and there, right? Or the most questions I get asked are, and um, but anyway, let's have a think about what we could do because we could try something out on Facebook Live. Yeah, yeah, I mean, with without a doubt. I mean, um, you know, it it is Facebook, and we normally suggest against using Facebook for for social selling. But, you know, something, if it's there, let's try it out and see what happens. It's, you know, it's a test, basically. Oh, and there went Ted. 
Oh, Ted popped out. So okay. anyhow, I'm 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 sure he'll he'll be back. So uh, Jez Johnson says I'm hopeful Microsoft will allow people to share good free content on LinkedIn, including video, as as do we all, because it's all about it's all about content. It's all about adding value. It's all about providing value, and and video is a fantastic way to do it. So you know, fingers fingers crossed that that's actually that that that's going to end up happening. Um, yeah, yeah. So. In terms of okay, the one tiny little thing I noticed. It's really, really small, and that is, uh, if somebody comments on the app on your post, mm -hmm. the and the several people that are commenting or posting, you can now sort those comments by most recent or top comments. Oh, really? Or, is so, yeah. this is is this on mobile or desktop or both? Well, it's already on desktop, I believe. Okay. So, it's, so it's top comments or recent recent comments. Huh. I don't know if you can see it. Okay. Oh yeah, cool. Oh, nice. Yeah, yeah, I can't see that. Yeah, that's very yeah. nice. So that's only a tiny little thing. I hadn't seen that before. Yeah, it just popped up. So. Yeah. Just like everything, it just kind of pops up out there. Exactly. Yeah. Exactly. So good, good. So, um, so we covered Ted's and we covered uh, and we covered what what we wanted to talk about. Um, yeah, let's just hope that um, you know, as with the Pulse platform, that that this does roll out to everyone eventually. And whether it's paid or not, I mean, I you know, I kind of think who cares? Obviously, if it's paid, pe people are going to care more more about it. But hopefully, the testing will will work well, and um, they will they will give it to us uh, non influencers or or as a there's a LinkedIn group called uninfluencers out there that um, that basically talks about you know how how to gain influence on LinkedIn without being one of their official influencers. Right. So uh, so hopefully that works. Like yeah, definitely. Um, so with that in mind, um, let's let's go ahead and go to our uh, just one thing segment, which uh, which talks about, um, you know, uh, things that we have done in the past with our training that we want to go ahead and uh, and mention to everybody out there. So, Michael, why don't you go ahead real quick with that? Well, it's it's actually a bit different. Okay. Um, we like thing. I'm, I'm currently researching Facebook groups versus LinkedIn groups. Okay. I'm going to create an infographic that, that basically puts them into a fight together and see who comes out on top. I love it. And at the moment, I'm not going to tell you the outcome because I already know the outcome, but I'm just posing the question what is our opinion of Facebook groups? Oh, by the way, do you know? Let me ask you a question first of all. How many how many LinkedIn groups exist? Any language across the board? How oh. many LinkedIn groups? Top of your head. It's it, it's at least in the tens of thousands, if not hundreds of thousands. Okay, it's a couple of million. Like I said, it's it's nowhere near what I said. Wow, <laughs> a couple of million. That's not bad. Now, guess how many groups Facebook has? Oh, God. And this came, this is two years old, this information. Wow. So it'll be much bigger now. Yeah. Uh, LinkedIn. You will never guess this, Bob, but have a go. 10 million. 620 million. Wow. Facebook That's, groups. And that was two years ago. Yeah. So, I mean, how many? So, how many users does LinkedIn or Facebook have right now? China, About one and a half. One and a half billion. billion. So that's. So we're. So if things have grown the way that I would kind of, kind of guess they have, there's probably almost one group for every person on LinkedIn right now uh, on Facebook almost. right now. Well, maybe maybe it's eight hundred million. Who right. Knows? Yeah. Yeah. But I mean, right. but there's that's significant. But people set up multiple groups. Yes, right? they do. Oh, yeah, without a doubt. Yep. Yeah, without a doubt. So, and people are in multiple groups. Yeah, I, that's right. Yeah. That's right. So 
the ecosystem, if you then start deep diving into the ecosystem and the functionality of it and the friendliness of it mm -hmm. and the ease of it and the things you can do there, mm -hmm. it's unbelievable. Really, it's, it's just I hadn't realized how enormous, how amazing Facebook have made groups. Okay. And it just, it just unfortunately, I completely understand why people have moved to Facebook. There's a few people I know, business people I know, who are doing like networking events, and they've got a LinkedIn group and they've got a Facebook group, and they've like no interaction on the LinkedIn group, massive interaction on the Facebook group, and these are businesses, uh -huh. right? These are business people. They're connected, obviously, privately too. Because everybody says, well, it's private being on Facebook, but it's not anymore. You know, the, yeah. the, the boundaries are, are very, very blurred now. And, you know, even for us, Social Sales GPS, we don't have a Facebook group. We have a Facebook page, but we need to have a Facebook group to develop that engagement with yeah. people. It's essential yeah. that we have it. Yeah, I would. Yeah. I, there was one guy who's some guy is publishing a book, right? And he started about a couple of years ago to build up his group, and he's now got like five and a half thousand people in his group, mm -hmm. and he's been writing this book for the last two years, and he's about to launch it this year. But he built an audience of five and a half thousand people, which is just incredible in a couple of years. Yeah, absolutely. There's no way you could do that on LinkedIn these days. Yeah. And have engagement and people talking, right, right, rather than just posting links. Yeah, well, yeah, I, yeah. So I guess it comes down to what, where did LinkedIn groups go wrong that Facebook hasn't gone wrong? And I'm actually asking that as a question because I have no idea. Hmm. Well, I I think one area, hey Ted. I don't know yeah. what happened. <laughs> Boom, poof, you're gone. You're back. <laughs> Love it. It's the California hot weather. Yes, it is. <laughs> yeah. All the broadband cables are melting. Probably. Something. Probably. So the question is, where did Facebook uh, where did Facebook groups go right and LinkedIn groups go wrong? Because we've been talking about um uh, engagement on Facebook uh, groups and how it just seems to be so much more. Um, so not, not only is there more engagement in general, but it seems to be a better quality engagement than 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 with LinkedIn groups. Yeah, I think it's the moderators in Facebook. If you post any self promotion in groups I'm in, they kick you out. And LinkedIn, everybody just promotes. They don't talk. No. Yeah, so does it come down to, um, you know, a, a possible answer, and, and there's probably more than just one, obviously, but I think a possible answer is is that because Facebook is more personal in nature, people take more, especially moderators, take more of a personal ownership in their groups, whereas with LinkedIn, it's probably seen more as business. It's just another business task to do. Oh, my God, I've got 18 billion things to do during the day as it is. There's no way I'm going to be able to moderate this this LinkedIn group, even though I started it, blah, blah, blah. Uh, you know, you know, I think that there's the, um, you know, a, a, an ownership thing there um, that, you know, people, people tend to take personal ownership uh, more seriously than, than, than a professional ownership that really doesn't have directly to do with their jobs as LinkedIn, as, as a LinkedIn group would basically, unless their job is social or something like that, then it's a different story, but most people aren't in that boat. Well, on LinkedIn, you're connected with your coworkers and your bosses. Mm -hmm. Facebook, you're maybe not connected with your coworkers and bosses, so you kind of you're freer to talk about things. Your coworkers and your bosses. Well, yeah, exactly. <laughs> <laughs> I was being nice. <laughs> <laughs> exactly so <laughs> so oh god that was funny um yeah so i definitely think that that's uh, that that's part of what's going on um there there are probably other reasons but the but, functionality but. is so much better there are so okay. many things you can do on facebook inside facebook groups 
Not only that, the notifications come in with all of the notifications. You know, you don't get emails, to my knowledge, but right when you get all your different notifications, like friend requests, birthdays, and <laughs> it's all in the same list together. It's presented on a page rather than a drop down flag, you know, on mobile. It's mm -hmm. it's just an easier experience. It's it's smooth. Uh, you can add photos and videos and files and create documents and right. there's so much there that you can do, which just doesn't exist inside LinkedIn. Yeah, yeah, it doesn't. And so it's not. So they're giving us rich functionality and a beautiful, smooth experience and easy to navigate around mm -hmm. as well really easy super easy to navigate around and then on mobile it's they've got the i don't know if you've got the facebook groups app i mean it's not too dissimilar to the linkedin groups app but <clears> it just <throat> works better it just looks better and yeah. you know anyway it's it's um a much better user experience and the user interface i think yeah i was just doing something with a client last week he wanted to know if there's any good groups to join. So we went to some marketing groups and one of them said 532 new conversations today. I think, oh, this would be a good group to jump into. On LinkedIn? Yeah. yeah. And those conversations were all people just posting comments or content. No comments, no sharing, no liking. It was 100% blast away. Yeah. Yeah. And people yeah. have software that said. posts that stuff, all these LinkedIn experts out there are saying just blast two or three articles a day to every group you're in. Yeah. Yeah. Wrong. Yeah. Uh, uh, and now what, what is the benefit then of being inside the LinkedIn group? So we know there's no benefit having a conversation. There's no benefit even from posting links, but what is the benefit for being inside a LinkedIn group? So this one, expert quote unquote said the reason he does it and teaches it those summary emails that go out once a day or once a week your name might appear in there and you might catch someone's attention right and then they'll contact you saying oh i liked your article but nobody's in the group actually reading the articles no so that's treating those kind of like direct mail basically well, <laughs> yeah what it comes down to to me yeah that's uh and that's why you the know, groups are dead hey. on LinkedIn. Nobody, it's just so much garbage. The moderators should be stopping all that. Yeah. You know, if you want to get a good conversation going, go into a group, say, hey, let's have a conversation. And people are like, oh, yeah, let's do that. Let's take this group back over. Yeah. I did that recently. And like a lot of people comment, yeah, I'm tired of seeing all this content here that's useless. Yeah. Yeah, I'd agree with that. Yeah, that's, yeah, that's interesting. Yeah, I may have to um, may have to do that with a couple of groups that I've been in that used to be good, but then fell by the wayside because of you know you know the uh, the content farming, I guess you could say. And uh, that's a good idea. Let's just let's have a conversation. So they call then, it content marketing. <laughs> yeah, yes, content marketing, and I mean content marketing is a real thing. But man, that's that that is one way not to do it. That's for sure. Yeah. So I think the only benefit of being inside a group on linkedin is the fact that you can message a member without being connected to them yeah mm -hmm. yep I, yep absolutely that's the only thing yeah so you could so you don't have to use it in mail mm -hmm. um you can find the person's profile check out their profile and send them a direct message yeah yep via messaging and that's the only benefit if you want to get in front of the right person so the ratio has to be 80 percent is where your potential buyers hang out and 20 percent where your industry professionals hang out so the 80 20 rule even if it's higher in terms of where your buyers hang out but the tendency is that most people will actually join groups where their industry hangs out Right, uh -huh. which is not the right way to do it. So, you know, if you yeah. train social media marketing, everybody goes into the social media marketing group. No, right. you need to 
you need to be where, where your you clients need to, are going. You know, which industry are you looking to get bias in? That's where you need to be hanging mm -hmm. out. Yep. Or geographical have, groups too. Yeah, absolutely. And then you've got the ability to message people directly mm -hmm. in a professional manner without right. spamming. Or without spamming, selling. without pitching immediately. Yeah. Hey, I got the product for you. You definitely don't want to do that kind of, yeah. Yeah, without a doubt. Start conversations. And then if it makes sense to sell, then, you know, if that comes up, that's fine. But it's about conversations. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. What's Jez? Uh, Jez has a lot of things to say. I think Jez should come on screen if he's got. Yeah. Microphone. Jez, you should absolutely come on. Just uh, just to take that seat, and, and if anyone else, <laughs> excuse me, and they and they want to come on, uh, you can come on via uh, video and audio, or you can just do audio alone. We don't, uh, we'd we'd like to see you, but we don't have to see you. So, um, so so feel free to so feel free to come in and. So um, the benefit of coming on screen is that when we have the replay of this video your name will also appear in the credits with the video replay so right yeah, absolutely help, might help you in your business as well mm -hmm. so hop on so now well we'd love to hear your no. comments no. um face to face and you'll get yeah, a google absolutely. alert actually i got a google alert for one of these replays i posted once really yeah i had all of our names in it oh that's cool <laughs> what happened once? that's cool <laughs> Okay, so, Jess, next time. No next problem. time. That sounds good. No worries, sir. No worries. No worries. We're here every Wednesday. Every Wednesday, 11 a.m. Eastern. 4 p.m. 4 p.m. British summertime. I like that. Pacific. <laughs> <laughs> I like that. Why can't we say Eastern summertime? Well, no, actually, we can't because, because we say EST, Eastern Standard Time. Yeah. And then Eastern EDT, Eastern Daylight Time. If we said summertime, it would look the same in the in the acronym. So mm -hmm. it just sounds cool. So um so Ted okay, uh, what else? That was groups. We've done groups to death. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, we've done groups to death. Uh and and they're kind of dying on LinkedIn, so that makes sense. Uh so um Ted, do you have something that you wanna uh bring up for the just one thing segment? Yeah, I'm doing an interesting experiment. <laughs> sure. Ooh. A friend of mine, Perry Marshall, who taught me Google AdWords years ago, he started a 30-day challenge this month. So basically, you're supposed to start your day with no technology for the first hour or two. You just do journaling and meditating and exercising, whatever. And part of the rules are hmm. no social media until 5 two p.m. Hours? No, you're not allowed to touch electronics for the first two hours of your day. So I had to get wow. up early, early this morning. Uh, yeah, <laughs> yeah, exactly. Yeah, that's, you got up at five a.m. Wow. <laughs> Put your two hours in, so you were rocking and rolling at seven, right? So I have to say, he said, "Don't go check Facebook," and then two hours later, you're still on Facebook. I haven't gone on Facebook until the evenings, and I only spent like five minutes there. Yeah, and right. same with all the social media. I did a little LinkedIn because I, you know, that's our jobs. Right. But I got so much done in the last two days. I'll Yay. tell you. Uh, you don't know realize how much time jumping on Facebook or going to LinkedIn and sharing some stuff. You just mm -hmm. get sucked in and it takes your energy away. Like by the end of the day, I'm usually really tired. I work yeah. until five o'clock till seven o'clock. I'm just getting so much done. All these things are coming off my to do list. Mm hmm. You know what helps me, and, and and this is so not social selling related, but but for but for people who are in front of their computers, especially me, because I've got this huge twenty seven inch iMac that's like about a foot away from from my face. So so you get all that blue light in there that kind of drains you and everything else. I bought these um, these Gunner G U N N A R glasses about a couple months ago. I wear these and they're and they're slightly um, orange. Yeah, and yeah. and um, it really makes a difference. I, I wear these things all day long and you're and I'm at least not not nearly as tired as as I would have been before, you know, being in front of this huge thing all day long and everything. And um, I mean, so it it's really been working for me. And the other thing that I just read about and I haven't had a chance to do it yet, but I read somewhere that if you 
put these glasses on like about an hour before bedtime that that it comes off something in your brain that has to do with like the old hunter type of thing that we all have in our brains but we can, you know don't just don't use anymore it actually shuts that down so that you can get to sleep faster because because there's no blue coming in in, in through your eyes an hour before bed interesting mm. Yeah, yeah, you that's know, real interesting. You know they did an, an update on uh, iOS, right? About the that blue color yes. in the evening. Yeah. Right. Yep. So that's a similar thing. So the the blue hue color, whatever, you mm -hmm. can time it from a certain time in the evening where it stops, and you get that orange, kind of orangey color coming through over the top of it. So. That's that's okay. If you move to my try, yeah, I just noticed that too. Okay, yeah. Justgetflux.com. So Jez Johnson saying um, software to make your life better. Justgetflux.com. Let's uh, actually, I'm going to unpin that because that was the wrong wrong thing here. How do I unpin that? There we go. So I'm going to pin that. Oh, it's just it's not doing it right. So let's just open it. It's not going through right no. through through the blab system for whatever reason, and I'm sure that it's the blab system. So it's just just get flux dot com, just get flux f l u x dot com. Uh, I have to check that out. In fact, I'm going to write that down. Talk amongst yourselves. Okay. <laughs> yeah. So 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 Ted, interesting about your experiment. I've been doing an experiment as well, although. In the last uh, week or so, I haven't been adhering to it. But I, I, as part of my, I don't know if I shared this before, as part of my uh, kind of content marketing, I found a website called zenhabits.com. And uh, there's a guy there in California who writes a blog, really interesting uh, blog posts about different things. And he had a book coming out. So I, I got the book on my Kindle. It was like really dirt cheap. And it tells you what to do each week in terms of forming a habit. And his example for him, this is not what I'm doing, but his example, I'll share in a minute what it, what I'm doing. He, he wanted to lose weight and do some running each day and everything. And he, the Zen habit meant that in the first week, you do the habit for just one minute, just one minute or two minutes, something like that. Okay. So he just had enough time to put his running gear on, his trainers on, walk out of the door, and then come back in again, right? But because he did that for a week, he developed, you know, obviously started wiring his neurons in right. his brain that that's what he was going to be doing each day. It's like, you know, in the morning brushing your teeth or whatever. Yeah. So, and then in the second or third week, you increase it and then you develop it. I'm, a, I'm only on about week four. I'm stuck a little bit, but what I, I hate paper and I had a paper mountain on my desk I, because I prefer to work paperless, but these are like personal papers and work papers and whatever. And I've been putting it off and off and off and off for months. And I started this Zen habit. Now I did cheat. I didn't do it for one minute or two minutes because I just didn't feel I could get enough done. But I did it for 15 minutes. And within a week, I cleared the whole paper backlog. So again, wow. just switch off. You, you have to have a trigger. So your trigger could be, I don't know, I, I put a playlist together of music or my trigger was switching my computer on. But I, although I wasn't going to go into any social media or whatever, it's just decide 15 minutes, particular time of the day to yeah. do this habit. And then I'm moving that that kind of habit forming into other parts of my personal life too. So for instance, you've been tackling some of the overgrowth in our garden <laughs> and spending 15 minutes in the evening when, you know, when it's not so hot and clearing the garden. So that's now taking shape. So yeah, you're right. You know, forming, forming a new habit about something. So your non social media habit of not doing something, no, no social media for two hours in the beginning of the day is is amazing and what you're doing is you know forming a habit and it would be good definitely to see your story develop you know if you're journaling about it that would be really really awesome to read too yeah no i just yeah. jumped on it like for 15 minutes last night i was on facebook and it's like you know 
I don't miss this. So I went all day, two days in a row without going on Facebook, which is like, I'd always have it open. And I'd jump over and say hi to people and yeah, it's wasting time. Are they missing you? I, I haven't been on the sea. <laughs> <laughs> so, yeah. Yeah. I, I've heard of Pomodoro as well. I've got the app on my Mac and I haven't used it. So I'm using a few other different apps. So I was getting too confused with, you know, reminders and habits, but yeah, I, I do jazz. I, I, I know about that app and there's a few others around. Oh, too. Okay. Yeah. I actually used that when I wrote my books because I had trouble. I, I was working full time and I'd come home at night and try to write. I'd set that timer for 20 or 25 minutes. I'd just focus 20 minutes of writing, take a little break, 20 minutes of writing. It works really well. Interesting. Okay. Yeah. That's very yeah. interesting. So I, you got to turn off everything on your computer and your browser. You know, you can't be having multitasking. It's just 20 minutes. I'm going to write. Okay. Yeah. All right, it's very good. forming that habit, isn't it? It's that, yeah. breaking yeah. that habit. Very yeah. good. Brilliant. Okay, well, success with that experiment. I look forward to to hearing yeah. each week how you're progressing. Let's put that on the agenda. Let's put that program. on our on our 28 page long agenda now. And uh, <laughs> yeah, <laughs> things to do. Um, and actually, speaking of experiments, um, a couple weeks ago, Ted, you had mentioned that you had changed your headline. So it was back to the older um, uh, keyword um, keyword style rather than the uh, value add style. I'm just wondering if you had any type of update in terms of uh, if it's gotten you more business or just what's your feeling um, about that? Well, I got those weeks. two calls that day. Mm -hmm. And let's see my profile views if they've gone up. Oh gosh, yeah, they've gone way up. Seriously? Wow. It took a little dip, and now they're gone way up. Wow. So, so, uh, so, so, just so everyone else knows, we normally uh, talk about making our headlines be value added. So, in other words, it's not about keywords. It's not about saying account executive at X company. It's about you know telling people what value you bring to them when they contact you based on your profile. Well, Ted decided to go a little contrarian a couple of weeks ago and actually um, use keywords in his headlines, which is which is what used to be done in like uh, 2009, 2010, like that time period, basically. It was it was it was popular then. So um, so so Ted uh, did that. And, uh, and and you're hearing now that it's actually working which is yeah. great. Now, I, Vivica said something about it. She was going to do this new course on LinkedIn A to Z. Uh-huh. And she said, you know, that's a lot of work because there's so much to cover. She surveyed her audience. They said, we just want to learn about generating leads on LinkedIn. Right. And I see a couple other people that are doing really well with LinkedIn consulting that focus on lead generation. Yeah. Yeah, I can see but, that. I can see that. We're marketers. We always have to be testing, right? Right. Yeah. Exactly. Yeah, you're yeah, right. It's it's all about testing, and uh, and and uh, you know, awesome. even even though Ted is, you know, Ted's just one person in one specific industry. I mean, I'd, I I wouldn't mind seeing, you know, and I, I have no idea how you'd even set something like this up, but you know, different people in dis different industries who are you know pretty active on on LinkedIn actually do that with their profiles and just see what you know you know just kind of see what happens basically uh, you know do you get phone calls from actually having more keywords in your headline in that old you know keyword style fashion so um in fact let's see I'm, I'm gonna look up Ted's here really quick just because I'm interested in seeing what his head I, I actually didn't I was going to look again, and then I forgot. There it is. So Ted's head, so Ted's new headline is LinkedIn lead generation slash social selling slash digital marketing slash best selling author slash international speaker. That is a 2010 style uh, headline, and <laughs> yes, it uh, <laughs> but it's working. I mean, that's something, and that's good. I mean, good for you, obviously. Applause and everything for that. But that and it's only the first couple of keywords that are really getting people's attention. So it must show up in the sidebar. Yeah, you know, that could be it. Yeah. 
Yeah, LinkedIn lead generates are self-selling. I'll have wow. to look on the mobile app too. I haven't looked at the mobile app in a while. Yeah, okay. Yeah. yeah. And although I'm I'm just testing search for LinkedIn lead generation. And you No, I see a couple of guys have it in their name field. Oh. Right. Uh, yeah. Which makes you go right to the top, but it's against the terms of service. Yes, yes, COS, yeah. 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 Vivek and I both got banned for a day because of that. <laughs> <laughs> naughty, naughty, naughty boy. No, we were reporting. Our <laughs> really? Some Thank of our competitors, you. our competitors reported us. One, somebody was really mad. So I wrote an oh. article about it saying it works really well. I said, well, that's against the terms of service. I said, well, you know, technically it says here I can do certain things. And then she did the same thing. Somebody reported her. Wow. <laughs> Yeah, wow. it's log in and teach a class and your LinkedIn account's disabled. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> you've been banned. Oh, God, what did I do? It came back in 24 hours. I reached out to support, and they're like, you can't do that. And you're like, oh, okay, whatever. So obviously, yeah, people have to report you. I know this woman was really upset. We were having an online debate about it. Uh-huh. She reported me, and Vivica said she knows who reported her, too. <laughs> oh, wow. Uh oh god that's funny that is too so just wipe by your competitors by reporting them for violations <laughs> you know <laughs> is that the uh, donald trump way of doing business right <laughs> <laughs> we'll soon all be doing this <laughs> we'll see you it'll be huge yeah oh god that's funny oh yeah that is too funny. So, so that experiment's working good. Uh, other experiments are working, and um, yeah, it's all good. So, it's Keep eleven forty. Updated on that too. Each yeah, week. absolutely. Yeah, absolutely. maybe I'll change it next week. I'll change it back to what it was before and see if my profile views drop. Okay. Oh, okay. Yeah, that'd be great. Yeah. yeah. That'd be great. And it doesn't, when you change your headline, that, that doesn't go out as an update, right? That you can the, send it out as an update, but yeah, I as, usually don't. As, the headline? Well, yeah. I mean, if if you have that setting in your profile to, to notify updates, mm -hmm. set to yes, then any change that you make, even even in a headline, will get sent out, which is which is why I teach to always switch that to no unless uh, unless there's something that you do want to push out there and then mm. switch it to yes make the change and then switch it back to no basically mm. yeah yeah cool so cool so there was my tip right. of the day too. <laughs> there you go <laughs> cool so with that in mind i th it's it's 11 45 uh, i don't have any other questions coming in so i think uh we'll just go ahead and wrap it up that's okay with you gentlemen Perfect. That's good. That sounds good. So for Michael and Ted, I'm Bob Woods. This has been Social Selling Wednesday. We are here every Wednesday at 11 a.m. Eastern, 8 a.m. Pacific, uh, 4 p.m. British summertime and wherever that is around the globe for you. Feel free to join us and feel free to join in in the conversation, too. So until next time, we'll see you. See you see around. Ya, bye. All right. Bye. Thanks, Jez. Bye-bye.